Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm gonna be taking you through five unique CSS tricks that you probably haven't used before. So let's jump right into it. First up, we've got the max content value against the width property, all right? So picture an example like this where you've got a div with some content inside of it. Going inside the text editor, we can see right here, I have this div with a class of content and the text within that, as well as a rule set for the content class with a font family, backgrounds, a color, and some padding. Now, as we can see here in the example, the width of the div takes up the entire remaining space on the page, and this is natural of a div with a display of block. But what if you wanted the width of the container to only be whatever is in uh, the container itself? So basically, what if you want the content inside the div to determine what the width should be? Well, you can use the max content value against the width property. So going back inside the text editor here, we can see if I was to do a width of max dash content just like this, I'll save it, go back in the browser, and now we can see the width is determined based on the content inside of it. Now, I find myself using this not too often, but it does come in handy especially when you are designing layouts and for whatever reason you can't use something like an inline block instead this right here can come in handy next we're going to have a look at the aspect ratio property in css so this one here is relatively new and it allows you to set the width or the height or both against a element or an image so we can see here i've got this blue square on the page going inside the text editor here it currently looks like this. I've got a div with a class of container and of course a rule set here to say width, height and a background color. Now, this is perfectly fine in this instance because the aspect ratio as we know is gonna be one to one, which means the width is exactly the same as the height. Other popular aspect ratios are gonna be four by three and 16 by nine, just the name of couple. Now, you can actually set an aspect ratio in CSS. And when is this useful? Well, this is useful in situations where your width or your height is relative. Let me show you an example. If I change the width of this to instead be 50%, and I'm going to keep the height at 100 pixels, I'll save this, go back in the browser, and now we can see the width of the container is relative to its parent, in this case here, the body itself. So it's 50% of the body, but the height is not changing. So the aspect ratio of this div here is constantly changing as the width changes. But what if you don't want that? Well, you can do that very easily using the aspect ratio property. Instead of saying a height of 100 pixels, if I want the width to always be the same value as the height, I just say aspect ratio one, and then use a forward slash and then one, meaning one by one. If I was to save this to go back in the browser, it's now gonna be a perfect square, one by one, and if I was to change the width, the height changes with it. So once again, just like the last uh, example, this here is perfect when designing layouts, and it's come in handy quite often. It's gonna maintain the aspect ratio based on a single value, instead of having to specify both. Now, just keep in mind when using this property here, um, the browser compatibility, as we can see at the moment, if I check the MDN reference for this, I'll just get it up right here and scroll to the bottom. It's compatible in all of these browsers down here, but of course, make sure that um, your target audience is gonna be able to benefit from this property, especially when using it on production environments, but um, that right there is the aspect ratio property. Next up, we've got attribute selectors. Now, what are attribute selectors? Well, as the name suggests, it allows you to select elements based on their attributes. So right here, I've got two input fields, an input field with a type of text and one with a type of date. I can choose a date here instead of a text field. Now, if I go inside uh, VS Code right here, we can see I've got both the input fields in my HTML with a text and a date for the type, as I just mentioned. And we also got a bit of CSS 
interface for the input tag or all input tags, a display of block, a margin and a border. Now, these attribute selectors that I mentioned just before allow you to select your elements based on their attribute or their value. Let's have a look here. So if I hop down here and then I say input, then using square brackets and place inside here, placeholder just like that, this is going to select every single input field with a attribute of placeholder. Okay. So now I can say, for example, a border color of blue instead. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and it changes to blue. It is that straightforward. You put your uh, you put your attribute inside the square brackets, and you can select based off of that. Now that's the first part. The second part is uh, getting specific based on the value inside the attribute. So let's have another uh, look here. So if I change this to be type instead, then I say equals, then I say using uh, double quotes here, date, just like that. Now I'm saying select every single input field with a type of date. So you can actually get specific here with the value inside the attribute. I'll save this, go back in the browser, and now we can see that only the date input field has been selected and that border color applies. So definitely can come in handy in rare situations where you need to select based on your attribute. And I've also seen this be done in the past with data attributes as opposed to standard attributes like this. So definitely very useful. Moving on now to pointer events. So the pointer event CSS property allows you to change how elements react to as the name suggests, pointer events. So right here, I've got this button. When I hover over it, it's gonna change the font to be a bold font. And if I click on it, it's gonna show an alert message using JavaScript. Going inside the text editor here, we can see we have the button in the HTML. We are also saying colon hover, then saying font weight as bold. Then right down here, we're saying a query selector against all of the button tags. And for each button, we're gonna to say when the button gets clicked on, we're going to alert you clicked. So that's the code for this page. Now let's explore the pointer events property. Like I just showed you, it's going to have a bold color, sorry, a bold font weight. You click on it and it shows the message. So going back inside uh, VS Code here, let's now target the class of my dash button, then say here, pointer events and then say none. So none is probably the most popular value that you can set against this here. And it's going to essentially disable any pointer related activity against your button. If I save this, go back in the browser here, if I try to hover over the button, it no longer changes to a bold text. If I click on the button, it no longer shows the JavaScript message. So essentially right here, you can disable all of your pointer events and pointer behaviors against an element. It is also not specific to buttons, it works on pretty much any element that you apply it to. Now, the use cases for this can be quite rare. Obviously, in most situations, if you don't want uh, a hover effect, for example, or you don't want some JavaScript to run when you're clicking on the button, you probably want to make that explicit in your code anyway. But just in case, this property here can come in handy in those situations where, of course, you want to disable it for whatever reason. So that is your pointer events property. And last but not least is the scroll behavior CSS property. So this one here is gonna uh, determine how uh, your, your browser scrolls to a certain part of the page when interacting with your anchor tags. So let's digest that. As we can see here, I've got a bunch of dummy text on the page. If I scroll down to the bottom, I've got this title, which acts as, you know, just like a new section of the page, right? So about us as the heading. Now, you've probably seen it before where if you have in the, uh, in the URL here, if you do hash then something like about us, You've probably seen it where when you press enter, it jumps to that section of the page. So this is done using the ID of whatever the element is on the page. If I go inside VS Code here, I've got an ID of about us 
on that h1 so if i do hash about dash us in the url and press enter it's going to jump to that section of the page so that's how that works but you can actually change this behavior by using the scroll behavior css property so going back inside vs code here let's go against the html and then say scroll behavior as smooth and this here is going to allow for smooth scrolling when you jump to that section of the page let's change the url back to normal as we can see it's perfectly fine if i now say hash about us and press enter it's going to smooth scroll down to that section so just a nice touch that you may wish to introduce when using your anchor tags your link tags on your page or when users are you know clicking on an external link to your website and you want to make them scroll down smoothly to the section that they clicked on so that is your scroll behavior css property and that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.